The state of JavaScript survey results are out and it reveals some interesting aspects I want to briefly talk about. As a quick FYI, the state of JavaScript and the state of Octoverse are two resources worth following every year because it will help you get an objective overview of the dev ecosystem. In this video, I'll focus on some of the trends emerging from the survey and, hopefully, we'll get an idea about the direction of the front-end space in 2023. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First of all, let's clarify the context. Almost 40,000 participants took part in the survey. Most of them are between 25 and 44 years old, and the years of experience vary, with most people having a pretty decent history in the space. Finally, the type of companies the participants work for are fairly evenly distributed between small, medium and large. However, I'm glad to see that a big chunk of the devs are part of larger companies. Fair or not, the tech stacks used by large companies are usually the ones in most demand in job markets and the ones getting the most attention from third-party collaborators. So, if there is one takeaway in this video, is that the pragmatic decision is to always stick with what the big tech companies are using. Change is happening at a very slow pace due to maintenance issues, backwards compatibility requirements and the most basic reason of cost efficiency. So, as we'll see in a second, React is in high demand and is used by everybody ranging from hot new startups to enterprise clients. If you want a safe and stable job, simply stick with that. However, it is my strong belief that you should always keep an eye out on what's happening in the software world. After all, we would all still build our UI in jQuery if we only focused on what's in demand at a certain point. The survey tackles a lot of different topics. You'll find in here metrics about the usage of various language features or testing tools. I'll focus mostly on the libraries section and, more specifically, on the front-end and the rendering frameworks. Interestingly enough, the rendering section was called backend last year, so, clearly, as a community, we are still struggling to understand what's happening to us. So, here are the front-end framework stats, presented in four big categories. Retention, interest, usage and awareness. While all four topics are interesting, we'll just look at retention and usage, since, I believe, these are the most relevant. Retention assumes the developer worked with the technology in the past and is interested to work with it again. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Svelte, Solid and Quick are holding the first three places here. A couple of weeks back, I posted a video comparing exactly these three frameworks and I was predicting that they'll be on the podium when this survey comes out. Are these frameworks a fad though? I think it's too early to tell for quick, but their resumability approach for rendering and its performance do not point in that direction. If anything, more libraries will build on top of this new architecture that quick is proposing. As for the other two, Solid is fairly young, but the retention is slightly going up and Svelte has its fourth consecutive year at the top of this chart. Coincidence or not, 2020, when this new wave of libraries started to gain traction, is also the year when the retention started to decline for established solutions such as React or Vue. Next, let's jump to the usage section and we'll see that the top three frameworks we just mentioned earlier are at the bottom of this chart. Going back to what I said, even though new, better tech emerges, disruption is not something happening overnight. React did so many things right and paved the way for frameworks such as Quick or Solid. It still has an active, very talented dev team behind it, and they are doing a lot of heavy work to improve some of their pitfalls. Interestingly enough, while Angular and Vue are seeing a slight decline in 2022, React still goes strong. Check out the video linked into the top right corner where I'm explaining why, despite all the activity in the front-end world, React is still king. So, the bottom line is, learn React for your day job and use Svelte, Solid or Quick for your pet project. Next, let's jump to rendering frameworks. Next.js, Svelkit and Astro are at the top of the list here. As you probably know, Next is a fairly mature framework at this point, built on top of the popular React and already proven in production multiple times. I am curious to see how Astro and Svelkit will perform moving forward, especially since I am a big fan of Astro. I talked at length on this channel about the benefits behind the idea of islands, so I will not get into any more details. I expect, though, that more rendering frameworks will follow this architecture moving forward because of the performance benefits. When it comes to usage, things are crystal clear. React is leading the front-end world, and its most popular meta framework is leading the rendering world. Remix, Astro and Svelkit are here as well, but there is a long way to go until they'll count as real alternative to Next. Before wrapping things up, I want to quickly tackle another topic outlining the dynamic world of front-end development. 
I also want to take a moment to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date with the dev space moving forward. So, in the not so sexy world of build tools, we heard a lot about Vite recently and about TurboPack even more recently. Vite has been on the top of the retention chart for the past two years, while its established competitor, Webpack, has been in a steady decline for years now. Okay, so let's switch to usage now. Despite the retention decline, Webpack is still heavily used, while Vite still has to surpass Gulp. So, yes, the front-end world is in constant change, and there are lots of new ideas and libraries trying to disrupt the norm. However, real change happens slowly. The pragmatic decision for you as a developer is to master the tools with proven records and still in high demand. On the other hand, if you want your skills to stay relevant in the long run, you should always keep an eye out for new ideas and alternatives. If you are still here, please help me win YouTube's love by liking this video. Until next time, thank you for watching.